Hello and welcome to today's session in our BEM to Manufacturing series. Uh, my name is Byron. I work here at Man and Machine in the manufacturing team. Uh, and today we're just going to be looking at to take our inventor designs uh, and then exporting them out as BIM content. Uh, so for this specific example today, we're going to be having a look at this standing desk uh, and how we would go about exporting this out as a Revit family uh, that we can then use in our Revit projects. Um, so to populate an office full or plan, for example. Uh, but this will work with uh, any inventor designs um, that, you that you're required to create BIM content for. Um, so maybe HVAC designs um, or furniture or kitchen appliances or anything like that. Um, this tool can be used um, to export your data out um, as uh, BIM content um, and as well as including all the uh, so geometrical representations, uh, as as well as all the metadata that's required uh, when creating BIM content. This tool does all of that for you. Um, so I've opened up my BIM content tool. Uh, you can find it in the Environments tab. Um, you have this BIM content tool. Uh, and like with most Autodesk products, uh, we work from left to right or up to down. So the first thing we need to do is start simplifying our design. Um, so this is a, an inventor model that's designed um, with a manufacturer um, or assembly in mind. Uh, so we'd want to create our drawings from this model. Uh, it's got all our fasteners and washers. Um, it's got the internal workings of this um, leg movement as well. Um, that's not something that a Revit family would necessarily need. Um, so the first thing we would need to do is simplify this model down. So I've selected my simplify tool. Uh, it brings up this um, simplify properties window, and then we can start excluding specific geometry uh, to make this model nice and light for use in Revit. Uh, so it does come with standard presets. Um, and this, uh, for this example, I'm just going to use the remove moderate detail option. Um, so you can see that all the holes, fillets, chamfers, pockets, uh, embosses, and tunnels will be removed for me. Um, if you just required the dimensions of the object, you could choose this replace with envelopes option. So if I select the assembly, it's going to grab the dimensions of the whole assembly uh, and just create one bounding box for me. Uh, so that's really useful if you just need to specify um, the size of your objects that, that's being placed into a building. Uh, you can just use this envelopes command uh, that gives you the overall dimensions of your design. Or if we choose uh, the top level assembly option, uh, we'll take each uh, subassembly or part uh, and create a bounding box of that, uh, or each part you can create a bounding box for as well. Uh, but we won't, we won't be using that today. Uh, we'll be just using the remove moderate detail option. Uh, let me just switch between those so it grabs all on all my features. Um, however, Maybe I do want to include certain features. So I'll just go around the top of this table uh, and grab all of these uh, fillets on top here uh, that I want to include. Um, I can also see that it's taken away my control unit or my control panel that moves the table up and down. So maybe I'd want to include that in my design as well. So I'll just turn, show the parts that are currently excluded and then just select the one, this uh, control panel to include that in my design as well. So you can see there it's highlighted in green uh, as well as the fillets that I've highlighted in green. Uh, the rest I'm happy to simplify. So it's going to remove all the fasteners or any parts that are smaller than 300 millimeters. 
um, as well as all of these other features. So some of these chamfers, fillets, uh, and so on and so forth, all of those will be removed as well, um, as I don't need that level of detail inside of Revit. Uh, my output type is going to be a substitute. So uh, we have model states in Inventor, uh, and we have a substitutes folder under there. Uh, so rather than creating a brand new part file, it's just going to add a substitute to my current assembly um, that I can then use the output of that uh, to create my BIM content. Uh, I'll keep the name the same, uh, and then we'll just make sure we save this in the correct location. So I'll just save this in that Revit folder there. That's fine. Uh, and then I also want to check uh, fill internal voids on um, in this example. Um, so that's especially useful if you have uh, really intricate designs, um, say any motorized parts that you don't want to include in your design or intellectual property, uh, intellectual property that you want to um, not share with the customer. Um, you can easy, either use this exclude parts to just remove those parts from your design completely, um, or this fill internal voids option is also really useful. Uh, and that's any internal parts or any internal voids that Inventor can't see from, I think it's 15 directions. Um, those voids get filled as a solid. Um, so one, again, um, saving your intellectual property uh, and also uh, simplifying the model further so it makes it nice and light uh, and easy to use uh, in Revit or any other application that you require it in. So you're making nice um, small sized models uh, for people that are going to be reusing your model. Uh, so now that we've simplified our design we can go ahead and press OK. Uh, and then we should see that we're left with a much more simple design, a uh, much more simple model, uh, which is going to make our output uh, a lot more smaller si file size uh, and a lot more resource in, uh, or a lot less resource intensive uh, when we use it in external applications. So you can see now in my model tree, I have this simplified standing desk. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is add in our MEP connectors. Um, so you have a range of connectors that you can apply um, to your specific model. Uh, so if you're creating duct work, uh, you could use the duct connectors. Um, we've got pipe connectors, conduit connectors, cable trays, uh, as well as electrical connectors. Um, I'm going to add an electrical connector to this desk um, just to display the power output. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to edit this model further just to add in that um, well, a face that I can use for my connector. So I should be able to just double click on my desk uh, and that allows me to edit this simplified model further. Um, and I'm just going to draw a circle uh, on the face of this leg. Uh, maybe we'll just make sure it's central as well. So that's 70 moles. And then I can just dimension that as that divide two. I'll finish that uh, and extrude that out. Doesn't need to be very large. Uh, and maybe we'll give it a different color as well, just so that it stands out in our model uh, as a connector. I can return back to my original model, turn off the visibility of that. Uh, going back into my BIM content environment uh, and then add in my electrical connector to that face there. Um, I also need to select a specific type of connector for that face. So I'm going to call this a power the connector, uh, and then we'll just give it a voltage of 240 volts. Um, you can give a description if you need to. Uh, 
uh, press OK. I'll leave the rest of these um, properties as default. Uh, and now we'll see in our model tree, we should have an electrical connector applied to our model there as well. Uh, and again, depending on the type of um, content you're creating, uh, you have a range of different connectors available to you uh, that uh, transfers out that data. Um, the next thing we need to do is author our building components. Um, so all of the metadata that's re that you're required to send with your uh, BIM model, um, this is where we include that as well. So the first thing we need to do is uh, specify an omni-class uh, category. So I've just gone in and searched for office furniture. Um, and then we can see we have in here um, an office furniture omni-class category. Uh, what we're really interested in is, is this Revit category. So furniture, we'll press OK to that. Uh, and that places in our Omniclass category. Uh, that's more an American standard. Uh, in the UK, we use Uniclass, uh, which is not yet um, available to us in Inventor. Uh, but adding in that Omniclass category, category um, gives us our uh, standard Revit parameters and properties from this category. Um, so it's still referenceable in Revit. Uh, and again, that Revit family category is also placed in there as well. Um, the next thing we can do is add in our model properties. Um, so if I check this model property box, uh, it's going to give me a whole lot of physical information of um, this standing desk, uh, as well as the standard I properties that come with it as well. I can specify the specific I properties I want to transfer over uh, just by selecting this filter icon over here. I can either select only properties with values uh, or I can select custom um, properties uh, just with these check boxes over here. Uh, so we've got a custom property called URL here. Uh, so we've included that in our model as well. Um, just so that people know where that this table comes from. Uh, but if you needed to include, say, warranty for information, for example, uh, this is where you would include all of that information. Um, so the, the, the metadata that you need to uh, include in your BIM content, uh, this is where you would do that. Um, if you needed to know what specifically was required, uh, when exporting BIM content out with regards to uh, the properties and parameters that you require. Uh, we do have a great BIM to manufacturing uh, video already on our YouTube um, that goes into those standards required for BIM content. So I definitely recommend uh, having a look at that video, uh, or you can drop us a message and ask us um, what specific information is required uh, when creating your BIM content. Um, so it's going to depend for furniture compared to HVAC systems or uh, building supplies. Um, each different type of object you're exporting is going to have different standards required. Um, so it's definitely worth reaching out and asking us um, for help in that regard. Um, but we've managed to simplify our model down. We've added our electrical MEP connectors as well. Um, we've added the properties we needed to apply to it. Um, so the last step we just need to do is export it out as the correct file format. Uh, so currently we have three different format types that we can export it out to. Uh, we're gonna choose this Revit family type today. Uh, but you do have the ability to export it out as an IFC file uh, or an Autodesk Exchange file as well. Uh, IFC is, is uh, an open source BIM um, file type uh, and Autodesk Exchange files um, can just be referenced in multiple different uh, Autodesk applications. 
for this, we'll just choose RFA. Uh, we'll give it a name. So I'll just call it standing desk dot uh, RFA. Select save. Uh, and then we can see that it's taken no time at all to export that out. I can have a quick look at the translation report. Uh, see that there's no errors. It's all gone through successfully. Uh, so all we need to do now uh, is open up the model in Revit. So I've got this uh, partial office floor plan here. Uh, and we've got these desks here that we may want to replace with our new standing desk. Um, so I'll delete this one out. Uh, and then just come and insert that model into our uh, so that Revit family uh, into our Revit project. Let me just make sure I'm in the uh, correct location. So it's a standing desk and that standing desk um, Revit family. Uh, and then I'll just place that component in. And you can see there we've got our nice uh, standing desk. Um, Nice representation. It's got our electrical connector. So if I select it, you can see it's giving me all of those parameters there, uh, as well as the location. Um, if I have a look at my properties as well, you can see it comes in with my description, but with my URL, uh, all of the physical properties. Uh, again, these can be customized in Inventor before you export them out. So depending on the standards you require, um, all of that is available to you. Um, and now it's a family that I can just uh, use like I would in Revit. Um, so I can place in a whole lot more. Um, and then just use my standard align tools uh, to place it exactly where I wanted to, uh, as you would with any other Revit family. So I'll quickly place it uh, aligned to the floor. Uh, and then maybe just aligned to one of these walls. So I'll hide that away. I can grab this wall here. Uh, and maybe this face here. Um, hopefully that places it aligned against it. Yep. Uh, and then I'll just drag it into place there. Uh, so it's just a, a really useful tool uh, that allows you to create your in intricate inventor designs uh, and place them, well, convert them to BIM content, which is a a requirement more and more customers are are needing to fulfill these days. Um, and when you can couple Inventor's capabilities uh, with Revit, um, it, it gives you a really powerful package. Uh, so we can also automate this process for you. Um, so anytime you finish a design, um, we have iLogic capabilities uh, that can automatically create a BIM content model uh, of your design for you without you needing to go through this whole process. Um, so if you were interested in that, uh, please reach out to us uh, and we can have more discussions on that. Uh, or if you just wanted any more information on this general workflow, uh, We'd be happy to answer any questions you have on that. Uh, but that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for this session. Uh, so thank you for having a look. Uh, and again, please reach out if you do have any other uh, questions. All right, have a good day.